security so you can start using it for like pulling up uh, password lists and whatnot. Uh, beyond the dipstick, I've been talking about Trojan uh, USB devices. I've always showed you the mouse. Um, I've been working on, okay, Tenacity's logo is this, <laughs> is this howling wolf and uh, while I was at a recent uh, meeting they gave me this cool little plush uh, stress toy but it was hard to fit all my electronics in it. So I've been trying to get better at sculpting. So let me see if I can put this guy back together with a function. So I have a 50-50 chance of hooking this thing right up right. Oh, bye. Someone come up to me later on. I think I got it with me. Who has ever seen Army of Darkness or Evil Dead 2 or one of those movies? I have a Necromonicon styled um, iPod touch cover. Unfortunately, I haven't got the finger biting part done yet. Um, that's going to have to require a few servos and some extra electronics, but we'll talk about it later. All right. Here's my little tenacity wolf I tried to sculpt. And I've essentially used uh, RGB LEDs in its eyes and I can actually change those programmatically. So if I want to make a more advanced version of this, I could make it like the NAVS tag. That's that little rabbit you see right there that gives you extra information about what's going on in the computer like is there new emails or whatnot. Well, I can make the eyes change different colors based on what's going on in the computer system. But to do that, I need extra software installed. So when you're socially engineering someone to install these things, you can say, yeah, I got this cool desktop toy for you. It does extra things for your computer, but you got to install this extra software along with it. I'm not much of a social engineering. I mean, I leave that to uh, people like uh, Dave Kennedy and Chris Nickerson and the guys on the uh, social engineering podcast. I, it's been said before that I use my personality as birth control. Not to mention my, not to mention my accent kind of gives me away if I'm talking on the phone to somebody. But social engineering with, with Trojan devices, or as I like to say, beware of geeks bearing gifts, is another option. All right, I'm going to start speeding up through this. Uh, this is basically the internals of that mouse I was showing off earlier. If I can get this to play. Essentially, I've just soldered in um, the Tensi, a little hub so I can still get USB 2 speeds on onboard storage. And the uh, thumb drive I have in here isn't exactly a thumb drive. It's a essentially a micro SD card adapter. And you'll see it behind everything else. There's that little RGB LED which I basically just have set to iterate through colors to make it pretty. But I could program it to do something more advanced if I really, really want to. But that's essentially how this one's built. And if anybody wants to see it in the uh, Q&A room, feel free to come on up. Um, oh, another thing I made. I'm not much of a sculptor. I'm getting better at it. But for some reason I can uh, sculpt skulls. I don't know why. So this is another little Trojan uh, device that you give to someone as a cube toy. Basically it's a little skull that uh, the, light, the eyeballs flash different colors eventually. There we go. And it looks nifty. That one I made out of something called Shape Lock which I'll talk a little bit more in a second. All right. Arts and Crafts in my DEF CON. Is it more likely than you think? All right. Uh, there's also some cool things out there for making these kind of uh, Trojan toys. Uh, Shape Lock is the first thing I want to mention. Shape Lock is five minutes. Thank you. Shape Lock is this cool stuff. I believe uh, the guy before me mentioned it as well. Essentially you put it in boiling water. It melts down becomes very flexible. You can mold it into whatever you like. But then when it gets hard, it becomes like hard plastic nylon. It's very, very tough stuff. And that's what that skull you saw a second ago is made of. Also, LEDs don't always look the best if it's a raw LED because you can see the individual elements in it. Uh, but if you diffuse them, if you basically put the light through something, it actually looks better. And shape lock is really good as a diffusing substance. Uh, Two-part silicone putty. Uh, some of the stuff I've sculpted myself. Some other stuff like my little um, penguin here. I basically found someone else's penguin toy, cast it with this two-part silicone uh, putty and then I could keep casting more and more of the same toy to use as packaging for my devices. Um, if you're really lazy, go to like a hobby store. Cake, soap and candy molds also work very well. So for instance, if you know your, your target's very religious, you can go out there and find like a soap mold that is uh, made like a crucifix or sorry, a cross or a star of David. Which brings to the subject, why would someone want to use a cross as a soap mold? <laughs> I mean, I've seen it. It was in the store. I'm not sure why. 
But I mean that's an option for making uh, toys to hand to people. Uh, silicone caulk also will work as a casting agent but you don't get very good definition and it's kind of messy and you got to use water with it to get it to set within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, polymer clay which is what I sculpted the wolf head over here out of which is very easy stuff to work. Kind of looks like the opposite of shape lock. You basically bake it and it becomes hard and tough and then you can use that to um, cast other items which is what some of the things I've done. Um, hot glue also works as a casting agent and it's really good at diffusing light. And fishing lures. A lot of these rubbery substances I've been messing around with are actually made out of melted down fishing lure. It gives this really cool funny texture and uh, it's really easy to cast and once it comes out it's awesome. Uh, and it is fairly heat tolerant. You got to get it fairly hot to actually melt it. Unlike shape lock. Shape lock I, ha I made the mistake of leaving uh, something I made on the dashboard of my car <laughs> in a hot summer day. Black Honda fit. Wasn't a pretty sight. But here's a bunch of stuff I've been casting. I'm going to start uh, speeding this up because I don't want to uh, run out of time. Now there is various things you can do to protect against these kind of fuck devices. For instance Windows 7 Vista has a ton of things in group policy that you can go in and set and uh, there's more information on that particular URL and that part is in the slides that are on your uh, CD and I'm going to have it out on my website before long. Also I uh, basically it manipulates these particular registry keys so you can basically go in there and say don't automatically install any USB device and that's the safest bet. You can also go and say don't install this particular vendor ID and uh, product ID which is how you can kind of like a or <sighs> all, right, all these USB devices have vendor IDs and product IDs and you can blacklist those but you can also on the Tensi set them to whatever you like. You can tell it it's an Apple keyboard if you want so that doesn't do any good. I usually set mine, I think my vendor ID is usually 1513 and my product, product ID is like 666 but you can have it whatever you want. If you want a ton more information on how these work, I wrote an article recently where I go through step by step and describe each one of these group policy settings. It's out on my website and it's near the top of the list if you go to the front page and look at the history. Also if you're in, look, in using Linux, look into UDEV rules. I haven't looked into them enough myself but there it should be ways of doing much the same thing in Linux. The OS 10 people, I don't care about you all. Um, no one laughed at that? It was just, I'm going to get lynched when I leave here. Okay. Few ideas I have for future work. I'd like to make a version of the Tensi that goes inline so I can sit there and sniff key, well, log keystrokes as well as send them. Then I can sit there and have it pass out when someone hits control at delete and then a tab and know, oh, that's probably the username and password that they just typed in. I can go ahead and start doing my evil and use their credentials for it. Stuff like that could be very interesting. Also, a long range wireless keyboard, which the guy before me has kind of uh, covered. So um, I have various links out there. Paul's site, my project site, USB DView which is an awesome tool to see which USB devices are currently attached to your system. I've used it a lot for this. That way you can see the product ID and the uh, vendor ID so you know what you want to uh, spoof. Uh, Reg from app was useful for figuring out what particular uh, applications edited what things in the registry. Uh, and Hack5 has their own rubber ducky for them. Uh, there's tons of things out there for sources for parts. The Tensi store. Photo resistors, I get a lot of my stuff from BG Micro or Mauser. You can go to Radio Shack but Radio Shack kind of sucks these days for parts. Uh, LED shopping is a nice place to buy all sorts of types of LEDs and I buy tons of stuff from Deal Extreme. For instance that little micro USB adapter I was using and there's a really nice hub they have there that you can take apart, has long wires and you can make it very small to fit inside of objects like a mouse. All right, a few events I want to mention. The Louisville InfoSec is coming up on October 7th, 2010. Uh, hope some of you all can make it out there. Uh, Sky Dog come, uh, sorry, Sky Dog Con. He's one of our goons here. It's going to be coming out sometime in 2011. Keep pestering to me. Ask, actually, gives us a date. And also, I'm regularly going to Freaknik, Not a Con, and Outer Zone. All cons I recommend. And a little bit of announcement. Uh, a few of us from the Louisville area, and well, one guy from the uh, Cleveland area, are organizing a con in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, this one's ways off in the future, September 30th to October 7th, 2nd, 2011. But it's called DerbyCon. By the way, if anybody can help us with some uh, names for it, we're trying to find, well, actually not names, we got a name. We need a slogan. And we want it to be either Kentucky or horse themed. So a few ideas I've had. What color is your derby? Uh, 1100 nerds and devices, which one someone came up with. Being the security word like a French steak. The glue that holds the hacker community together. If anybody has better ideas, let me know. Special thanks to all these guys again. And questions will be out of the room and I'm going to get out of the way because I'm about to get pulled off stage. Everyone have a lovely evening.